Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to move on with AP Chemistry Unit 7, Section 7, which is all about how to solve equilibrium problems. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and consider subscribing. That way you won't miss a thing and you'll have your entire AP Chemistry course right here available to you. Well, whenever we talk about how to solve equilibrium problems, often we are given some initial concentrations. Uh, we're often asked to solve for the final concentration. These, of course, might be pressures in the case of a KP problem. And sometimes all of these numbers can be very overwhelming, especially if you have four, five, maybe six uh, reactants and products to keep straight. And you have all these numbers. You have to keep the mole ratio straight. So this, this can get very confusing and very overwhelming if you're not careful. So I strongly recommend that you use a very organized method of working these problems. My opinion is use what I call an ice box. Now, when I say ice, what that means is you're, you're going to write the reaction from left to right, and right underneath it, you're going to write the letters ICE. And ICE, ICE, stands for initial change equilibrium. And so you're going to write the initial concentration or pressure for every single substance in that equation. You'll have a, a row for the change and you'll have a row for the, the equilibrium. Now the idea here is write down what you are given in the problem and then you're going to use what you know to solve for what you don't know. So it's kind of like solving a puzzle in some ways, because that's basically how something like a crossword puzzle or a Sudoku will work. You use what you know to solve for what you don't know. So we're going to, to work several problems together in this video so that by the time you get to the end of this video, you should feel pretty comfortable solving equilibrium problems with the icebox method. Here's the first one. It says that, that a mixture of 0 0.20 moles of NO 0 0.10 moles of H2 and 0 0.20 moles of water is, is placed into a 2.0 liter container at 280 kelvins. And the following reaction occurs. And there's our balanced equation. At equilibrium, the concentration of NO equals 0 0.060 moles per liter. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of NO, H2, and water and calculate KC. So once again, I'm going to write that equation just like it, it is given to me in the problem. And over here on the left, I'm going to write ICE. I stands for initial concentration. C stands for change in the concentration. And E stands for the equilibrium concentration. Now up here in the, the first part of the problem, it actually gives me the information or, or tells me what I need to know in order to fill in the initial concentration for all these substances. It says that for NO, just as an example, we have 0 0.20 moles in a 2 liter container. Now molarity is moles divided by liters. So that means that the molarity of NO starting out is 0 0.10 molar. And we can do the same thing for H2. 0 0.10 moles of H2 in that 2 liter container, we'll have a concentration of 0.05 molar. It also gives us the information to calculate the molarity of water. It says 0 0.20 moles of water is placed in that 2 liter container. So that means that its concentration is also 0 0.10 molar. Now notice that the problem doesn't come right out and tell us how much nitrogen we have at the beginning. But I think that based upon the fact that it doesn't tell us how much we have, it's safe to say that that value is zero. It's zero. Because if you are, are told what you're given at the beginning, and it doesn't tell you how much N2, we can assume it's zero. It's like, for example, if I have some uh, marbles in my pocket and I say that I have three red marbles and three blue marbles and three white marbles in my pocket, uh, what are the odds or the probability of uh, pulling out a purple marble from my pocket? Well, I didn't say I had any purple marbles in my pocket, now, did I? So since I didn't say that, we can assume it's zero. So it's, it's kind of the same thing here. If it doesn't tell us 
how much of something we have initially, it's safe to assume that it's zero. So that's why I'm plugging the zero in there. Now, there is one other nugget of information that the problem gives us. It says that at equilibrium, the concentration of NO is 0 0.060 molar. So for that uh, section here under equilibrium, NO, I'm going to plug in 0 0.060. Now, if I'm reading the problem correctly, that is all that the problem has given me. I have to use just this information to solve for everything else, for every other blank in this ice box. But I think I can do it because I know that the difference between 0.10 and 0.06 is a loss of 0.04. So here for the change row for NO, I can fill in negative 0.04 molar. And guess what? H2 is going to have the same change as well because it's a 2 to 2 mole ratio. And since the mole ratio is the same, the substances are used up at the same rate. So if this one is, num is minus 0.04, this one is also going to be minus 0.04 as well. Now, if the reactants are going down, the products have to be going up. So the, the values on the right side will be plus something. Now, N2, I want you to notice that the mole ratio is 2 to 1. Two NOs for 1 N2. So that means Whatever the change is for NO, the absolute value is going to be half that for N2. So if this is a 0.04, this is going to be a 0.02 because it's half the coefficient. But it's on the other side of the arrow, so this is plus 0.02. What do you think water's change is going to be? Well, take a look at that mole ratio. It's 2 to 2. So that means it's absolute value is the same. If this one was 0.04, that's going to be 0.04 as well. But since it's a product, it's going up in value. So this is going to be plus 0.04. Now, here in this first example, I'm going slower. As we do more of these, I'll, I'll, I'll start to speed up so that you can kind of get the hang of this. Now, as we solve for the equilibrium concentrations, we just do our Simple arithmetic here, 0.05 minus 0.04 gets us 0.01 molar for hydrogen. For nitrogen, of course, that's 0.02 molar. And then water, 0.10 plus 0.04 will be 0.14 molar. So we've answered the first part of the question. We've actually calculated the equilibrium concentrations of all these other three substances. Now we just have to calculate Kc. Now the way to do that is we have to, first of all, write the equilibrium constant expression, just like we did in our earlier video about that. So it's products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. So that Kc is going to be equal to N2 concentration times H2O squared, because there's a 2 up there as its uh, coefficient, over NO squared times h2 squared. And now all we have to do to find Kc is plug these numbers, these equilibrium values, into that constant expression that we just wrote. So the N2 is going to be 0.02. The water is 0.14, and that's going to be squared. All over NO, that's 0.06, which has to be squared. And hydrogen's concentration is 0.01. And that has to be squared. So you can key these numbers into your calculator, and you should get an answer of 1.1 times 10 to the third. And so that is the equilibrium constant for this reaction at this temperature. Notice that we were able to solve for this using just the information that was given to us in the problem. There wasn't a whole lot given to us, but we were able to solve for that. Let's try another example. Now this one might be a little bit more complex yet. It says, for the reaction, I2 gas plus Br2 gas yields 2 IBr gas. Kc equals 280 at 150 degrees Celsius. Suppose that 0.5 moles of IBr in a 2 liter flask is allowed to reach equilibrium at 150 degrees Celsius. 
What are the equilibrium concentrations of IBr, I2, and Br2? So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to write out the equation, just like that. And I'm going to put ice along the side here. That stands for initial, change, and equilibrium. So now we're going to plug in the numbers given to us in the problem. Let's see here. It says that we're starting out with 0 0.500 moles of IBr in a 2-liter flask. So when you divide that out, moles divided by liters, we get that the initial concentration of IBr will be 0 0.250 moles per liter. Now, the problem doesn't tell us how much I2 and how much Br2 we're starting with. So guess what it's safe to assume? We have zero, right? Just like the, the purple marbles example that I gave you earlier. Zero and zero for those. Now, does the information in the problem give us anything else? I don't think it gives us anything else other than the equilibrium constant. So we're going to have to do some algebra here. We know that you can't have a concentration of below zero. So I2 is going to have to go up. But by how much does it go up? Well, we don't know, do we? Well, if you don't know, in algebra, we call it x, don't we? So this is going to go up by x. So that's our, our change. If we don't know any equilibrium concentrations or pressures, we have to use x. It's an unknown. So I2 is a plus x. Br2 is kind of the same thing. We don't know by how much it's going to go up. We do know that it's going to go up by the same amount that I2 will increase by. And that's because it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So Br2's change will also be plus x. Now how about IBr? Well, it's going to be 2x, isn't it? Because the, the mole ratio is 1 to 1 to 2. But notice we're on the uh, the other side of the arrow here. So this is going to be not plus 2x, but minus 2x. If one side of the uh, reaction increases, the other side of the reaction has to decrease. So those are our change values. And for equilibrium, all that we can write right now will be x, x, and 0 0.250 minus 2x. So now, we're going to plug these values into our equilibrium constant expression. Now, we haven't written that yet, but let's go ahead and write that. Kc equals the concentration of IBr, quantity squared, all over the concentration of I2 times the concentration of Br2. Just like we've done this before. Products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. Now, we're going to plug in these values the problem tells us what Kc is. It's 280, so I can plug that in. And that equals 0 0.250 minus 2x, and that's quantity squared, all over x squared. Now, if you're trying to solve this algebra problem, how would you solve that? Well, I notice that I have a squared quantity on top and a squared quantity on bottom. So why don't I just take the square root of both sides of this equation? Now, if I do that, that's going to give me the square root of 280, which is 16.73, equals 0 0.250 minus 2x all over x. It just basically removes the, the squared part of those uh, values on the right side there. Now, I think I can cross multiply. So I have 16.73x equals 0 0.250 minus 2x. And now I can add 2x to both sides. I'm basically just trying to solve for x here. So that gives me 18.73x equals 0 0.250. And to solve for x, I need to divide both sides by 18.73. So I find that x equals 0 0.0133. Now, let's take that x value to actually answer the question. Let's find out the equilibrium concentrations of all three of these substances. Now, the first one was I2. And you might recall that its equilibrium value was just equal to x. So that's just 0.0133 moles per liter. And Br2 was the same way. Now, IBr was actually 0 0.250 minus 2 times x. So when you evaluate that expression, 
you find that IBR's equilibrium concentration is 0.223 molar. So there we have a fairly straightforward way to solve for all these equilibrium concentrations. Let's try one more problem. This one's a little bit different. It says, at 400 kelvins, a chemist adds NOBR gas into a sealed flask until its partial pressure is 0 0.500 atmospheres. The gas decomposes according to the following equation. And we have our equation there. At equilibrium, the total pressure in the flask is 0 0.600 atmospheres. Determine the equilibrium pressures of all three substances in the reaction and calculate Kp for this reaction at 400 kelvins. So once again, we're going to write out the equation, write out the reaction there, and we're going to have an ice box here. And we're going to plug in, now notice this time it's talking about Kp, so we're not looking at concentrations, we're looking at pressures, right? The P stands for pressures. Now it says that the initial pressure of NOBR is 0 0.500 atmospheres. So I'm going to plug that in for the initial slot for NOBR. Now, does the problem tell us how much NO or BR2 we're starting with? No. So what can we assume its initial pressure is going to be? Well, it has to be zero, right? Like the purple marbles example. If it, the problem says we're just adding NOBR, so it's safe to say there's nothing else in there. Now, does the problem tell us anything else? Or does the problem give us any equilibrium pressures? Well, you can read, and it actually says nothing about that. Now, it does tell us that the total pressure in the flask is 0.6 atmospheres. We're actually going to use that here in a second, but it doesn't give us any individual equilibrium pressures, does it? So we're going to have to use that X business again. So NOBR is going to have to go down, and since there's a coefficient of 2, let's call this minus 2X. On the other side of the arrow... NO, this is going to increase, isn't it? And it's going to go up by the same amount because it's a 2 to 2 ratio. So we're going to call this plus 2x. And bromine is also going to increase, but it's not 2x this time, is it? It's half of that because it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So this is just plus x. So our equilibrium pressures are 0.5 minus 2x, 2x, and x. Now, how do we solve the problem from here? Well, there's a clue in this line right here. It says, at equilibrium, the total pressure in the flask is 0 0.600 atmospheres. So what that means is that if I take these three expressions here, this 0 0.500 minus 2x, and the 2x, and the x, and I add those together, that's equal to 0 0.600. So we actually have this expression that is a true statement. We have a little algebra problem here. And all we have to do is solve for x. And that's not too hard. In fact, the minus 2x and the plus 2x kind of cancel out. And we have x plus 0.5 equals 0.6. We just subtract 0.5 from both sides. And we find that x equals 0.1. Now, if you plug that point 0.1 back in for x in each of these here, we find that NOBR, you know, 0.5 minus 2x, is 0 0.300 atmospheres. The nitrogen monoxide is 2x, so that's 0 0.200 atmospheres. And the bromine is just x, which is 0 0.100 atmospheres. We can double check this, and you'll notice that if you add these three pressures to each other, we do indeed have a total of 0 0.600 atmospheres, don't we? So it does work out mathematically. Now, the problem also asks us to calculate Kp at this temperature. So we're going to have to write the expression for Kp. Do you remember how to do that? It's products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. Now, it's not molarity. It's not brackets. It's written like this with the with those p's in there for partial pressure. It's pr pressure of NO squared times the pressure of bromine all over the pressure of NOBR quantity squared. So now we can just plug these numbers into that expression right there. 
the NO is uh, 0.2, and that has to be squared. The bromine is 0.1, and the NOBR is 0.3, and we have to square that. So when you evaluate this on your calculator, you know, 0.2 squared times 0.1 divided by 0.3 squared, you find that the answer is 4.4 times 10 to the negative 2. Uh, I hope you have learned something about how to solve equilibrium problems. There's a lot going on here. This was a little bit longer video than most. If you learned something, please smash that thumbs up button. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for a long time. And I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to learn how to deal with very small equilibrium constants. Join me in that video.